Hey gang, so in the last video we were looking at 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 drawing different colors to each pixel based on a formula. And so for each formula, calculating uh, a, a make creating basically a, a, a simple formula or this function, void main, for uh, determining whether it would be green or blue. And we just made this in circle value here to determine whether we should use blue or green. And then we used fract to subdivide the screen into a bunch of different areas where that same calculation was happening. Um, and both of these things, actually not the circle, but fract is something you're going to probably use a lot. Um, and um, it's it's it, it would be well worth it to make a whole video on fract I'm sure, but let's use it now to um, draw some uh, noise patterns, um, and so open simplex noise is there's a video here you can see by Daniel Perlin on it, um, it's probably the most important noise function out there, and it's better and faster and much more complicated than Perlin noise, which you may be familiar with. Um, but it's also derived from Perlin noise. In fact, it was made by the same person, or the, the first simplex noise was made by the same person. Open simplex noise is just the open sourced version of that code. Um, and and if you want to learn more about exactly what it is, this great video by Daniel Schiffman is your friend. Um, what I want to do is show you how to use it in a shader. So to use it in a shader, what we have to do is we have to, um, oops, we've got to go to NPM and we're going to bring a package in called GLSL noise. Oops. What's going on with my keyboard today? GLSL noise. Um, and GLSL noise is in the NPM package. And it's part of this, this really, really useful um, collection of tools that can be found at this place called StackGL, um, which is another environment for working with and learning about uh, WebGL. And there's a bunch of little packages in there um, this bunny, maybe some of you were there for the, the bunny workshop. Um, but to use GLSL noise, all we have to do is just say npm install GLSL noise. And it comes in to our node package. So we've got the code now, and it'll be in our node module folder. And what we need to do is bring it into our, um, um, project, but we're not going to bring it in here in our index.js because we're not going to use it in JavaScript. What we're going to do is instead bring it in in our fragment shader. And so this is, this is a little tricky bit, bit of code um, or ass assignment, but um, bear with me. We'll call pragma glsl defy. GLSLify. So we're going to use that GLSLify library. And we're going to grab a thing called SNoise3. We'll say equals require, just like in our JavaScript, GLSL noise simplex 3D. And there's a bunch of other noise algorithms in there, but we're going to just grab this one called snoise3 that's going to want a vec3 type and it's going to create, um, you know, what is essentially a lot like Perlin noise, but but faster and a little bit better. Um, and we're going to use that instead of using this circle. So I can get rid of this and in fact, I can get rid of all this stuff. I don't think I need any of this stuff. So in here, 
where it says in circle, we're going to have instead, we're going to um, use something. I think what we'll do is we'll use a linear interpolation or lerp. So we'll build this. I'm just going to build this this backwards from what we need. So what we need is well, first of all, actually, let's let's start up here and we'll say, let's make since we're going to need a vec three, which is going to be our x, our y, and our and a z. I'm going to make a value. It's going to be a vec three. It's going to be called pause, and I'm going to say vec three uv 0, 0.0 and this is a thing you'll 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 see a lot in shader code it's called swizzling we're taking one um, type of variable and, and turning it into another type um, and then I'm gonna say actually what I can do is just say float and so I'm gonna I'm gonna get a float from s noise and S noise is going to take in my pause. S noise three, sorry. It's going to take in my pa position, and it's going to return me a noise value. And so, how do we get that into this this lerp value? Um, well, I'm going to um, use fract to create a bunch of rings. And so we'll say ring equals fract. And then we can pass in there. We can pass in a um, some values. And maybe I'll start just by passing in uh, just an the n value. And we'll see what this looks like. Um, and then uh, I'll say float lerp equals pow. Um, Actually, you know what? I'll just say lerp equals n for now. Let's see. Let's see if that gets anything. There's some other stuff we should probably add in here to make this look more interesting. So we'll start here. And what do we get here? Let's see what else we've got in here. Recognize pragma. Uh, GLSLify. GLSLify. Lify S noise three require GSCLSO noise simplex three D. Hmm, that's interesting. Um, did I not have my Lify's there? Okay, it was just a typo. I'm not sure where the typo was. So I just went and grabbed that line from another file. And so now we've got this kind of noise pattern happening, right? Which is interesting. Um, it's more interesting than the circles, for sure. And we can start to animate that if we want to. Um, we're probably going to want some more um, uniforms to pull in. Um, and we could specify those directly here in the code, but I'm going to um, make them, I'm going to add them in our regal so we can make them dynamic later if we want to. Um, and so let's do, in addition to U time, let's make a thing called frequency. Um, and we'll set that to two, and eh, maybe we'll set that to, yeah, two, and we'll make a thing called noise scale, and we'll 
just set that pretty big. And we'll make a thing called ring scale. This is going to be um, sort of the size of the rings. And we'll make a, a value called contrast that's going to um, um, uh, create boundary contrasts uh, in our in our colors. And you know all of the image processing algorithms you ever use are, are generally written in in shader language and if there's interest at some point I can go through those those algorithms and we can talk about those in, in great detail. Um, it's pretty fun but it's it gets uh, it gets kind of deep. Um, and so those uniforms we need to then bring in, over to our fragment shader and we'll say bring you so we'll say uniform and I'll just copy and paste this down I should have done the multi cursor th cursor thing but you know it's morning sometimes it's easier just to Do it like this, and then we'll get rid of these values. All right, good. And so now we've got these. Oh, oops, I need to say what these are. So these are a float, and this is a float. This is also a float, and this is also a float. So those are all floats now, and my code is happy, and we're going to use those floats now. Um, so what we want to do is create this ring value, and um, or or modify this ring value a little bit, right? Because we've got these rings, and let's see if we take out this fract here also what do we get um, and so you know you can see what the fract is doing is actually not that much right now um, so we're mostly just looking at the noise function here but we can draw out that fract as it relates to each individual uh, area of of noise, and, and I'll show you what what I mean now. We'll say take that frequency value, right? And we'll I'm gonna I'm gonna work with just uh, since this is gonna be a float, I'm just gonna take one of these values, um, and we'll take the noise scale value. And we'll multiply these times this noise value. So we're not using, oh, obviously the reason why ring <laughs> look the same in both cases, so I wasn't using it at any point. Let's see what happens if we do ring now. And so now we get these rings. And I don't know if it's, if, if after the last video, it's easy to see how these, this is being subdivided in each area. Um, and uh, we can amp up the contrast a little bit using our U contrast value. We'll say ring. So we're going to multiply now this, the, the effects of this. We'll say U contrast. And we'll say, let's make this, um, normalize this. And, oopsie daisy, I goofed. Uh, where is the contrast? Is there, oops, that's interesting. Switch 
change that. There we go. And so now we get like this slightly slightly different type of coloration. Um, we can change, you know, you can change that. Maybe we make the contrasts. Uh, let's let's actually. I'm going to do that now. Make the contrasts change dynamically over time. Come back out here, and we'll say instead of passing two, let's pass a function, and we'll bring in the context into that function, and we'll say. Um, too much. Um, maybe it's not enough. Yeah, there we go. So now we're getting, it's, it's not that, that interesting, really, what we're getting. It's mostly just sort of blown out. Um, let's make this be That's better. So now we're kind of fading in and out of these contrasty areas. And you can see what different settings would do to this relationship. Um, we can make that be a lot more interesting. Um, but first, let's, let's go forward a little bit. And uh, let's see, what do we want to do? Let's bring in, maybe into this noise function here, let's, let's modify that over time. So we'll say, um, and actually, you know what, before I do anything, I want to, I want to, um, actually write this linear interpolation function here. Um, and so I'm going to pass in these values and I'm going to use them to augment, um, our noise value. And so now we get something that's a little bit more dynamic and interesting and varies according to where on the screen these um, gradations are happening. You can see closer, the center is closer to the edge. It's more green. Um, and what else? So we're going to bring in that sine value. Let's bring that in. We'll go sine u time and I was just gonna when I'm multiplying the u time time by the smaller value it just means that it's it's gonna increment more slowly and let's see what happens now so now we're getting these kind of interesting shapey shapey shape uh, as this um, noise value increases and then decreases um, and what else can we do? So we can, you know, we can we can play, we can add numbers in all kinds of different places, and it's worth doing so just to see what the effects are. I think I think like part of the reason I like to introduce slightly more complicated code to people who are just learning is because it's a lot more interesting to try and understand it um, intuitively and you know, dynamically if the effects are kind of interesting. Um, but it's not that interesting yet. Um, and um, to make it a little more interesting, what I'm going to do is up the, up the, up the scale just a little bit. Um, and to do that, I want to bring in a rotation function. So we're, we're familiar with rotation in um, P5, right? Where we uh, translate things, we, we can rotate on the X and the Y, and it's this sort of a function that's underneath those translations. 
So this rotate value, or rotate function, is going to take in a vec3 and a float. And it's going to calculate new coordinates by rotating, by turning. And you can see, you'll remember maybe from class, um, the cosine of theta and the sine of theta are what in a circle, right? The, the, the x coordinates of the points of the circle around a center. Um, and so we're going to take those cosine and sine values and use a um, 3D matrix to multiply um, and um, our point. And I'm not going to go into this formula here. Linear algebra is uh, scary even to me. Um, but at some point, if people are, are still here <laughs> in a couple of months, <laughs> I will teach you how uh, what I know about linear algebra. Um, which is, you know, increasing all the time, and 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 I, I you know, I know a little bit, um, but we're for now we're just going to take this rotate function. We're going to use it, um, and so what I'm going to do is make a new value. It's a vec three called rot points. So these are the points rotated, and I'm going to use the rotate function, and I'm going to pass in uh, a pause, and I'm going to for theta. Let's say u time times, let's just scale it down a little bit, right? So it's a little bit less. And now oh, we need to use those rot points here. And you can see now we're rotating, we're moving, we're animating. Each one of the, every point on the screen is rotating. And this, this sort of a rotation function is exactly what you would use if you wanted to have, you want to have anything rotate um, in 3D space. Um, and yeah, that's pretty much that. Um, I hope that was interesting. I hope this gives you uh, some, some interest in further exploring this, 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 this field. Um, we just ran through very selectively ran through most of what's currently online in the Book of Shaders. Um, there's some other stuff in here, cellular noise, fractal Brownian ro motion, and there's lots of stuff in between that's also really interesting. You can see there's a chapter on matrices. Um, and if people are interested and have time, I'm happy to work through this stuff with you. But um, I just wanted to get some sort of vaguely interesting working code out there with a fragment shader and and give you sort of the basics um maybe like the the 20 percent of this fragment shader that I, I think is is super useful there's other stuff too using images um there's so much um but in the next videos after this one i think what i'm going to focus on is working with this vertex shader, which is so um, so boring right now. And, and, and also learning some more about how Regal can be used to manipulate both the vertex shader and the fragment shader. And maybe, maybe actually before I go, let's, let's uh, uh, see about um, changing a few other values in here. So um, let's see. did this yesterday and oh yeah I was thinking about um, maybe taking color one you color one and all right we can pass a function in for our color value we can um, and here I'm I'm so I'm we're gonna keep this this blue color but for that greenish color, now it's going to be some other stuff. And so let's see what happens if I do that. And now you can see it's the context. It's a cosine function. Now we're not in fragment land anymore. We're in JavaScript land. But we're sending in each frame. We're sending in different color in. 
to mix with this this guy down here. And so that blue is staying the same, but we could also modify the blue. We can say map.sign. Maybe the easiest, right? For these these gradually shifting colors. And this will be context dot time. But we need to write the function using arrow syntax. We'll bring in the context as a um, as an argument, and then we'll call math.sign pass in context.time. And let's see what that does. And now it'll go black sometimes. It's getting cooler, right? Um, and I'm just going to, for the last thing, I'm going to work on that ring scale value. And I'll just pass in this function here. So now again, we're using that context.time. And we can see those those rings are are changing even more dynamically than they were before. And that's it. We just made a screensaver, y'all. Let's send it to Apple. Um, I hope that was fun. I hope that was interesting. And I'll be around on uh, Thursday morning if anybody has any questions. And, uh, oh, Christmas. Merry Christmas. Um,